Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I'm sitting here in the dark because that's literally how I feel about the Dallas Cowboys right now. Because you know we are... Yes, the whim of a madman we are all held hostage by. You know, um, Stephen Jones always reminds me of that guy that thinks that he is the smartest man in the room, that nobody knows how to do things like he does. You know, hey, man, I got this together. You know, we're so, hey, don't worry, you know, trust the process. And, you know, they, they come off with that whole arrogance. And the reality is, they really just don't know what they're doing. Um, I think that they really screwed the pooch here in the wide receiver situation because um, it seems like they were more reactive and just saying, we want to get rid of Amari Cooper and, you know, we can't afford him. And, you know, when you are paid that kind of money, you expect to get that kind of money in return. But see, the thing about money, and, and as we all know, I mean, I don't know if you've gotten gas lately, you know, the price of gas has gone up. If you've gone to the grocery store and, you know, bought some steaks or some hamburger or whatever, you know, the packages are getting smaller and, you know, the price is going up. You know, see, they're playing these little games. You know, it used to be you buy a half gallon of ice cream. I don't know if you've noticed, but the boxes are no longer a half a gallon. They're a little bit less than that, but they... Oh, but but they, they tell you the price didn't go up on the package. Same thing with mayonnaise jars. If you look at them, you'll see that there's a little bit bigger of a hump on the bottom of it. Even my favorite grandma cookies when I was eating those, now the way they stamp them, they actually stamp them with a little bit of holes in it. So it doesn't seem like a whole bunch. But see, if you take just like, you know, a, a tenth of a percent off, or no, say like 2% off, you can multiply that over millions of cookies where you're going to get a whole bigger yield. And so you have to understand that things cost more. And so as the Cowboys were going through and they're thinking about Amari Cooper being, you know, $22 million cap hit, you know, and, and we're not getting the production of stuff. I understand what you're saying. And then turning around and looking at Cedric Wilson and saying, well, you know, Cedric Wilson, you know, we can't afford him. Here's the reality of life, you know. I can't afford to fill up my gas tank. I can't afford to fill up my gas tank. But guess what? I can't afford not to fill up my gas tank because I got to get down to work. What am I going to do? Just say, you know what? I'm not going to pay that kind of money for gas. I'm just going to let it run out of gas and I'm going to be stuck on the road. No. What you have to do is you have to understand that I've got to either make more money or I've got to cut back someplace else because gas is a necessity. You must have gas or, or find another mode of transportation to get you where you want to go. And that's wide receivers. And the miscalculation that the Dallas Cowboys made was the reality of not realizing that the price is going to go up with wide receivers. And we're having this hissy fit renaissance of wide receivers that are all looking around and saying show me the money show me the money and the thing is is as we look at the compensation of wide receivers right now amari cooper's deal is looking better by the minute i don't know if you guys seem to understand this but let's take a look at how this has transpired right now with these numbers and of course i've, I've got them let me move the camera here a little bit. I know you want to see my beautiful face here. But take a look at this because, see, the market has been reset in the same way that now we have a $50 million quarterback. Well, guess what? Tariq Hill has now hit the $30 million mark average compensation for wide receivers at $30 million. Devontae Adams, you know, he had reset the market just uh, two weeks before that or so. At 28, DeAndre Hopkins at 27, 25, DJ Moore, 20, Keenan Allen, 20, Mike Williams, 20, 
Amari Cooper, 20. Chris Godwin at 20. Um, Michael Thomas, 19.25. Christian Kirk, 18. Kenny Galladay. You know, the Giants are paying Kenny Galladay, 18 million. You know, Tyler Lockett at 17 and a, uh, and a quarter. Mike Evans at 16 and a half. Robert Woods, 16 and a quarter. Brandon Cook, 16. And as you keep on going down, now Cooper Cuff, now that's, I don't think that's, is that the new contract? I don't think that's the new contract yet. Um, but at 15 7, Allen Robinson at 15, Cortland Sutton, 15. You, you, you see where I'm going down here? So if you're talking about having, you know, a wide receiver, and, you know, you could say, well, Michael Gallup, that was kind of a bargain there. But even a guy like Nelson Aguilar is 11, Tyler Boyd, 10, Will Fuller. So, this idea, you see how far down the list this gets until you finally get to Cedric Wilson, who's at 27th at 7-3-5. So this idea that you can find great players cheap. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't see Tariq Hill down here at a $4 million cap hit. You get what you pay for, and the Dallas Cowboys said, you know, <laughs> you know, Amari Cooper, that, that's too much money. That's too much money. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do that. But I think they miscalculated big time and not understanding the dynamics of how the market's going because um, you can see now Debo Samuels, he's out here, you know, deleting all of his Instagram and everything 49ers because he wants a new deal. He wants a new deal. And so the price is going to continue to go up. And here's the thing that I'm sitting here in my mind, um, and I didn't pull this, and I should have gotten it, and I, my apologies. Let me actually get the stats for Cedric Wilson because this is going to be an interesting take here. Because, you know, I understand that. I, I think it was more dynamics of Amari Cooper and the Dallas Cowboys not getting along. Um, I want to do a comparison here because I actually think that the Dallas Cowboys may have I, – I think the Cowboys may have actually messed up as far as the wide receiving position goes and that they signed the wrong guy. Because if we take Cedric Wilson, for example, first of all, Cedric Wilson was actually up and coming and was pretty freaking amazing um, this past year. I will say that Cedric Wilson was the second best quarterback in the NFC East. I mean, he's got a 100% completion percentage and averages 29.5 yards per pass. Um, these these could actually be <laughs> some major uh, accomplishments. But be that as it may, you know, he has had five passes, I think five completions and, and a touchdown. But if we go through, let's go through. Don't want to do passing. Hold it. I'm sorry. I Oh, yeah, passing. I don't want pass. Okay, here it is. Let's take a look at the receiving yards and stuff. Okay? Because up top here, here's what's what's kind of crazy. Um, and this doesn't show it in here the way I wanted it to. But I want you to understand that, you know, the top number up here is actually Michael Gallup. Okay, he had 35 receptions, two TDs, um, 445 yards, right? Here it is, Cedric Wilson. You know, he got more playing time because Michael Gallup was out. Michael Gallup, who, you know, had the calf injury that knocked him out for about seven or so games and then ends up having an ACL surgery done, right? And we're already hearing that, you know, he won't be ready probably week one. He'll, he'll probably miss the first two or three games. But here it is, little old Cedric Wilson had 602 yards, six TDs, but look at his average. He averaged 13.4 yards per completion, you know, with his longest being 73 yards. And actually, his completion percentage, um, I believe, was 73%, and Michael Gallup was like 56. So, 
you know, as a layman here, as a layman here, as a guy who, you know, I, I don't know anything. I'm just, you know, a, a fan of the Dallas Cowboys and, you know, give you my personal opinion on what I believe the Cowboys should be doing. Of course, they're not going to listen to me. But as I'm sitting here thinking about Cedric Wilson, who is $7.3 million this year versus Michael Gallup, who's, you know, 10, 11, I have to go back and look at it, who is not going to be ready to start the season. I can understand that, you know, maybe Amari Cooper wasn't the guy that you wanted uh, here for whatever, for a multitude of reasons that maybe you feel like, you know, I almost feel like they, they're kind of saying that maybe he's soft because, you know, he's not going to play through pain or, you know, he's not going to practice through pain and things like that and disappears. I'm, uh, you know, that don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm just saying that's kind of the impression that you are given about his situation. So for whatever reason you say that that doesn't work, but I don't know how with the numbers that you were seeing and the repertoire between Dak and Cedric, as well as having the, you know, the throwing ability, which kind of gives you in the back of people's minds, you have to say, if he's in the backfield, we got to look out for the pass play because the guy's averaging 29 yards per pass. Why you can't look at saying, let's go ahead and sign Cedric Wilson at $7 million dollars And not have to give up a draft pick, but then you're sitting here looking at a guy like Brandon Cooks, who's on the last year of his deal, okay? Because let's be clear here. If you sign Brandon Cooks, okay, I doubt that you're going to get him for a seventh-round draft pick. Let's start that out with. We know that you gave Amari Cooper away with the fifth. They were looking for a second. Why would you give up a second-round draft pick if you had a chance to do it all over again? Why would you give up a second round draft pick for a guy like Brandon Cooks, who's probably looking for $20 million? Because that's what he just re signed for per year for two years with the Texans. So now you're already paying $6 million of cap hit to get rid of Amari Cooper. Then you'd be talking about a $20 million per year for Brandon Cooks, as well as giving up draft capital. This is where the Dallas Cowboys thought they were so smart. We're, you know, we're going to be a better team because we're going to get rid of Amari Cooper because he's overpriced. Well, let's go back to the wide receiver compensation here. So as you start going down here, you know, Jalen Waddle, six seven. Melvin Jones, A.J. Green, Braxton Burrows, Keenan Cole, Devontae Smith. You know, Devontae Smith is only that cheap because he's on his rookie deal. Sammy Watkins. I mean, you're not looking at guys right here at the price that the Cowboys want to pay that are going to be game changers. And this, I bet you, I bet you the Cowboys, they're never going to go ahead and and say we were wrong. But the Cowboys were dead wrong in what they did with Amari Cooper. They miscalculated. They thought they were so smart. But right now, you got to say you look stupid. And now we're we're being linked with, you know, trying to uh, make a trade for Devontae Smith. You know, we're trying to look at getting um, the guy from Miami You know, now that you've screwed the pooch, so to speak, and you're kind of left holding the bag, now you're going to cost and spend more money. And that's the same thing with, you know, saying, you know what? I'm not going to fill up my gas tank, man. You know, I think I got enough to make it to work and all that. And you end up running out of gas. And guess what? Now it's going to cost you more money because now you got to either hike yourself over to the gas station, buy a gas can, and then hike your ass back over to the car or call somebody else to do that shit for you because you didn't plan how to make the deal work. And that's the Cowboys right now. And it may end up being that we end up costing ourselves, you know, a top draft pick for a wide receiver when we had that situation taken care of. But instead, now you're going to have a hole somewhere else in the team. <sighs> it drives me crazy. But that's the life of being a Dallas Cowboy fan. 
a Dallas Cowboys supporter, a Dallas Cowboys YouTuber. You sit here and you wonder over and over again, what are they thinking? I wish I knew because it doesn't make any sense. And so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get our behind out of here. Hope you guys are having a great night, and I will see you soon. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters.